This morning, millions still picking up the pieces from a once-in-a-generation winter storm, nearly causing a statewide blackout. While the power is thankfully back up and running for many, more than 8 million are still without safe drinking water. We don't know when it's going to be fixed, and we don't have any drinking water, any flushing water, any washing water, any water. There are sprawling lines at food banks and distribution centers that are doing all they can to keep up with the need stretching statewide. We're serving just an inordinate amount of food. Um, it's just unbelievable. Many families now also facing storm-related damage, like burst pipes that could take weeks or even months to repair. But I was hoping, you know, no, it's not going to be me. It won't be my house. I opened the door and walked in, and I stepped in the puddles of water. Their home destroyed, Monica Ware and her husband forced to empty their savings account to pay for a hotel room for their family of six. We lost everything. With some relief on the way from FEMA, state leaders promising to learn from this devastating tragedy. We're going to do all we can so this never happens again. But for the family of Christian Pineda, who died from suspected hypothermia after his family's mobile home lost power, Changes couldn't come soon enough. Attorney Tony Busby now represents seven families that lost family members, including the Pinedas, who filed a $100 million lawsuit against ERCOT, the agency managing the Texas power grid. He saw his first snow, and he died the next day. Um, something like that should never happen in, in the United States. In a statement to NBC News, ERCOT responding, we haven't yet reviewed the lawsuits in full and will respond accordingly once we do. We are confident that our grid operators made the right choice to avoid a statewide blackout. Now, one key priority from state lawmakers will be taking on these sky-high energy bills that so many customers are facing across the state. Texas Governor Greg Abbott says it remains a priority. He has not named any specifics, but some are saying to use federal disaster funds to potentially alleviate those bills for the customers. I think emergency management is about relationship building. Emergency management creates the framework that we use to reduce our community's vulnerability to a hazard and to cope with a disaster after it happens. Any time a local agency, uh, a local entity, or even a state agency has to respond to an event that they can't manage the event with their resources, then that's when you get an emergency management involved, whether it's your local emergency manager or the state emergency manager. Both of us have enabling legislation or ordinances that allows us to tap into all the resources that a county has or the state has. We're merely facilitators and enablers. It's our job to make sure that that local incident commander or the state person in charge of whatever event they're managing is successful. Emergency management to me is basically a, a spirit of cooperation between agencies within a county. Uh, if you will, picture a wheel and emergency management as far as emergency response being the hub of that wheel and the other agencies being the spokes. We coordinate the activities, we respond to the other agencies and help them provide the necessary services they need within their county and help get resources they need to perform those services. 
Uh, emergency management would be the one department within each county that act, uh, acts as the coordination for all of the other emergency services. Participates in a large amount of planning, uh, overall training and exercise activities for the county to uh, coordinate and ensure that all of those agencies are working together uh, prior to and then when the wind begins to blow and the waters begin to rise. I see it as teamwork, a group of emergency responders working together to ensure the safety of the citizens within my county. I do not believe that one person can do that. You just have to you know, develop relationships within all emergency response agencies as well as the public and private partnerships that you have to develop. Emergency management is a coordination of all agencies that come together to get to protect the public. We serve all disciplines, where it be fire, EMS, law enforcement, agriculture, recovery, Red Cross. What we do is to manage that span of control with those resource requests coming in to the state level is we have regional coordination centers. These centers are, are pre-established, three, three geographically across our state. The biggest thing is we're trying to get resources, people, commodities, get the speed to the need. We never want to be late with delivering services resources, swift water teams, our urban search and uh, rescue teams. We won't be able to pre-deploy those, have those out in those regional uh, coordination centers under their direction and control that they can immediately uh, get the resources out when we need them. We do say all, and, and you'll hear this anywhere you go in the nation, is all disasters begin and end locally. So in emergency management, as I mentioned, you know, we don't have the resources, but we have established strong partnerships with other state agencies and with counties, with the federal government, so that we can very rapidly get resources downrange and what I call the battlefield and the disaster operation very, very quickly. And so that's the key, I think, to our success is the interpersonal relationships that we strive to maintain each and every day. I think the biggest thing is just a, a spirit of partnership and cooperation. Uh, none of the counties, none of the municipalities in the state are as autonomous as they would like to be. They depend on one another. The state of North Carolina depends on us, we depend on them. So it, it's cooperation and, and coordination between us that allows us to do what we do within the state.
You never know when disaster is going to strike, but sometimes cameras capture the drama and devastation. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 most dramatic footage of natural disasters. For this list, we're looking at the most extraordinary footage of adverse natural events caught on camera. Number 10. The Great Miami Tornado Tornadoes seem to love wide open spaces, but in May 1997, an F1 tornado decided to march right into Miami. As if realizing its mistake, the twister tripped lightly through downtown, bumped into a cruise ship, jumped over most of Biscayne Bay, flipped a car, and then vanished. The damage was small, but the apocalyptic images of a tornado looming amidst skyscrapers grabbed international headlines. The noise was something like, I never, I never had something like that. Of course, tornadoes don't actually prefer farmland. There's just more rural area in the world than urban. And the footage of the Great Miami Tornado was a dramatic reminder that even tornadoes sometimes visit the big city. Number 9. Debris Flow in Grunier, Switzerland in August 2018, the sleepy alpine village Grunier in Chamazon, Switzerland, received an unexpected and decidedly unwelcome visitor. It began as a rumble and was at first confined to a narrow canal. But as shocked onlookers watched and filmed, the river of black mud overwhelmed the channel and rampaged through the town, over roads and into cars and houses. The disaster came after intense rainfall from a sudden storm, which had caused a river higher up the mountain to burst its banks. There were no reported casualties, but a heck of a lot of mess. Number 8. Mount Ontake Eruption When we think volcanoes, we think fire and brimstone, rivers of lava and a rain of hot hell from above. Pyroclastic flows, however, which are currents of gas and volcanic debris, are often much deadlier, rushing downhill at average speeds of 62 miles per hour, and sometimes up to seven times faster than that. In September 2014, as hikers strolled up Mount Ontake on the Japanese island Honshu, a cloud of steam and ash suddenly exploded from the summit and unfurled across the sky. The onrushing flow was captured by a documentary crew and by a hiker as he scrambled for cover. 63 people lost their lives. The hiker here was one of the lucky ones. Number 7. Loma Prieta Earthquake On Tuesday afternoon, October 17, 1989, thousands of baseball fans waited with bated breath in San Francisco's Candlestick Park for Game 3 of the World Series, while others watched from home on TV. What they got was something else. It was the first live broadcast of a major earthquake on national television. I'll tell you what, we're having an earthquake. A slip in the San Andreas Fault triggered a short but powerful earthquake of magnitude 6.9 on the Richter scale, sending the Bay Area into chaos and leaving 63 dead and thousands injured. Security cameras and camcorders captured the moment when the banal suddenly became the unimaginable, as shoppers dodged shelves and students were jostled in their classrooms. Number 6. The Chelyabinsk Meteor a catastrophe from space is probably the last kind of disaster you expect. But meteors enter our atmosphere more often than we'd like to dwell on. Right, dinosaurs? In 1908, an explosion attributed to a meteorite over the stony Tunguska River in Russia flattened 770 square miles of woodland. More recently, on the morning of February 15, 2013, Russia was visited from space again, this time over Chelyabinsk Oblast in the Ural region. Multiple dash cams caught a searing white light trailing fire across the sky before it exploded in midair, shattering windows and injuring at least 1,500 people. And then all hell broke loose. <laughs> Dizzying explosions, shattering windows, knocking these office workers to the ground. Number 5. The Indian Ocean Tsunami Propelled by a powerful undersea earthquake, the Indian Ocean Tsunami devastated the coastlines of 14 countries. It was one of the worst natural disasters in recorded history, with a horrific estimated death toll of 230,000. In parts of Indonesia, Thailand and Malaysia, the sea first receded, enticing people to run out onto the exposed sand and reefs. But massive tsunamis up to 100 feet high soon followed. At some beaches, the first wave seemed harmless, but as they grew in strength, they inundated homes, hotels and streets. Home recordings from the tragedy shocked the world, showing people riding waves of debris or floating adrift in drowned cities. 
Number four, the California wildfires. In the second half of 2017, the worst wildfires on record raged through California, destroying almost 10,000 structures and taking the lives of 47 people. First responders caught stunning footage of the Tubbs and Atlas fires as they drove through the inferno and fought the flames. But some of the most memorable and frightening footage was taken by a driver on the Interstate 405. As December's Skirball fire consumed the Sepulveda Pass in Bel Air, the entire hillside seemed to be one glowing coal, like a hellish mountain. The fire burned through 422 acres before it was contained. Number 3. Everest Avalanche In the wake of the April 2015 Gorkha earthquake, Footage from around Nepal showed temples toppled and homes reduced to rubble. Almost 9,000 people lost their lives in the tragedy. Meanwhile, on the roof of the world, even the mountains shook from the quake, sending an avalanche down from the peak of Pumori near Everest. Hikers at South Base Camp heard the rumble and felt the ground tremble first, before a massive blast of snow swept over them. The survivors emerged into a white world of torn tents and buried equipment, with at least 19 people killed in the terrible disaster. Number 2. The Mount St. Helens Eruption The weeks-long buildup of Washington State's infamous stratovolcano in 1980 was slow and spectacular. Blue flame burned in the stratovolcano's craters, and lightning generated by static electricity arced through ash clouds. The ground shook, and steam hissed from the summit. But this was all just a prelude to the morning of May 18th. In one unbelievable moment, the north flank slid away, triggering a massive VEI-5 eruption that tragically killed more than 50 people. The entire mountainside seems to disintegrate and pour away like liquid in the largest landslide ever recorded, and the most disastrous eruption in American history. Number 1. The Tohoku Earthquake and Tsunami Footage of the Tohoku tsunami revealed scenes of unparalleled devastation. Waves barreled over houses and entire towns disappeared, while boats and flaming debris were carried far inland. Sweeping over northeast Japan, the tsunami took the lives of 16,000 and destroyed countless homes. From above, its dramatic, unstoppable advance had the horrifying quality of a nightmare. On the ground, people ran up hillsides to escape, as streets became rushing waterways. These apocalyptic scenes shocked the world. The result of an earthquake so powerful, it shifted the planet on its axis. New technology left an enormous amount of evidence for study in years to come, and can perhaps help us better understand the power of earthquakes and tsunamis and prevent loss of life in the future.